out on the sea searching for something that really found me i didn't know it but it drew me to it soon i was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. It's been windy most of the week, and I've stayed off the water. I've invited a group of friends to a fresh fish dinner in a couple of days, so I'd better find somewhere in the inner bay to catch some tasty fish. Time to get the boat ready. You know, it's not just jumping in the boat and taking off. It's getting all the gear from the house to the dock, getting the stuff in the boat, making sure I engage the kill switch and get the keys ready. I make sure I have all the rods and tackle in the boat. I turn the main battery switch on, raise the motor up a bit, and it's time to lower the boat and make sure that the bunks don't touch the bottom and that the cables go loose because the tide is low. So I cautiously work it out from the dock and I'm slowly putt-putting out of the canal, trying not to disturb the bottom. to turn on the Raymarine and let it load up and connect to the satellite so I can have my GPS navigation. As I approach the first bridge, I can see that the tide is flooding. Good sign. Fish like moving tide to feed. Going slow is a good time to have my breakfast. In this case, a fresh avocado. I'm finally out in the bay and my first instinct is to see if the fish are going to be here today. Skies look a little angry but I'm hoping strong winds and rain will miss me. I troll the deeper part of the channel, but the water still looks murky. I don't see any bait fish activity, just some birds and some tourists on the beach. Yes, fish on. Man, I don't know if you can hear that wind. It's gusting so strong. I'm so thankful that the last three, four days we were able to get out offshore because there's no way today. The wind must be blowing about 20 miles an hour in here. So what we're doing is fishing spoons and artificials in the intercoastal and some of the larger expansions. Yes, it's a bluefish. Come on, come on, get away from the motor. It's not huge, but you know what? When the conditions are tough like this, any fish will do. I'm gonna try to go downwind where it's a little nicer so the rain hits me in the back. Come on up. Ah. There, look at nice blue fish. He's not a big fish. You know what, for eating, the smaller ones are tastier anyway. But we're just having some fun. I'm gonna keep a couple of them if we can stay dry. Look at the one thing you gotta watch about blue fish, I don't know if you knew this, but they've got sharp teeth. Can you see all those teeth? They're like piranha teeth. So I've got my glove on more for working the reel because I'm not really handling the teeth in the mouth, but look at. They remind me a little bit of a trout, you know, like a steelhead or a rainbow, because they're so silver. They have amazing eyesight, and when they hit, man, they almost rip the rod out of your hands. Okay, I'm gonna get it in the water. It's gonna take off like a bullet, watch. Gone. You can see the clouds. Look at all the rain just out in the Gulf. So I'm thankful that we're here on the inside. We got wet, but you know what, in Florida, the weather's so warm, it's probably about 75, almost 80 degrees right now. So we're drying off pretty quick, especially with that wind blowing. I'm trying to keep my back to it. Even when the weather gets rough here on the intercoastal, at least you can find places that you can duck out out of the wind. Oh, it's a ladyfish. You know, these fish are so much fun, especially for people that are fishing from shore with live bait. Look at it, it's just got the one hook in its mouth. If it thrashes off, it's okay. When usually when you use live bait, these guys grab it like shrimp, 
and fly all over the place. So today it just made one jump. Look, look how silvery it is. Very good bait. You know, tarpon love these things. Even offshore fish love to eat ladyfish, like king mackerel and some of the Spanish mackerel. I'm gonna put it in the live well because it might come in handy for bait later. There we go. I catch a couple of small fish, but the wind is getting unbearable. I see flocks of birds coming in from offshore and lots of birds huddling on the beach. Hmm, not a good sign. I duck into a small channel where I'm out of the wind and again trim up and navigate along the shallow flats, working my way to at least two feet of water near the mangroves. Time to start casting some plastic grubs along the mangroves and see if I can find a feeding fish. This requires rapid casting as close to the mangroves as possible and covering the water. The Bear Apex 1.0 reel has a manual bail, which is quick and fast and prevents line loops over the spool, especially when I'm jigging and get slack line in between reeling line in. This is like an interactive game with one hand on the remote controlling the distance of the boat to the mangroves with the motor guide and casting with the other hand and covering as much water as I can. It was getting windy out in the main bay, so we thought we'd come here and try casting along the mangroves, and it's nice and protected. I put a little jig on. Yeah, Mr. Red. Beautiful. Okay, I don't know if he's gonna stay on. That jig isn't very far in its mouth. Nice, Red. Look at that. What a gorgeous fish. I thought he had two spots. He does, look. He's got two spots on one side, and one spot on the other side. They're beauty marks. Aren't they gorgeous? They're such great fun on uh, light gear. And he grabbed that jig. You know, I thought I saw a ray swimming and it was him swimming really close to the mangrove. So I checked my jig in there and he hit. Beautiful fish. You know, I've always had luck with redfish using a very bright jig, paddle tail jig. Look at, so there's that jig. Look how bright it is. So in the summertime, they get really gold. It seems like right now this guy is really silver. And I'm gonna try to hold him there. Look, at red drum. I love those two eyes right there. Beautiful, he's being so good for me. Here he goes. I continue to work the remote and start casting away from the mangroves and bingo, right near the boat. Hey, spotted sea trout. Are you done? Are you gonna jump? trying to. I was just going to cross to the other shoreline and this guy hit so I might try a few casts out in the open. It's not a big fish but boy they're so pretty. Very aggressive. He wasn't going to get off. Look at how he's hooked just in the side of the jaw. Look. Beautiful fish. It's his lucky day. Okay trout there you go. Tide has gone high slack, and I made a move to pick up some small crabs. Re-rig lines with a small, thin hook, a few split shot sinkers, and a sensitive float. It's time to check out my favorite fish house and see if the sheep set are going to be feeding along the piles. After all, slack tide is one of the best times to get a crab close to the piles without getting it swept away into the barnacles. Crabs are sheep's head favorite snack, but they can be tricky to use. You have to hook them very gently using a thin wire hook, being careful not to shatter their shell. Boat position is good. I start swinging my line as close to the pile as possible. You know, we've got a slack tide. So I thought we'd take advantage of it and fish some piles for some sheep's head. These guys are great eating and they're pretty plentiful. And if the tide is low and slow, it's a good time to fish for them. You can see those teeth that they have on the upper and lower jaw. Man, it's really hard in there. And even with a small hook, a lot of times they're hard to hook. Look at, aren't they pretty fish? They're great eating too. This guy's a little bit small. I'd love to get a couple of them to take home and cook them up tonight. See if I can just carefully take this hook, but I don't want to break the hook. There, look it. Now watch, it's probably going to take off real quick. And it's going to disappear in this water. Look it, gone. The trick with the crabs is to use a light wire hook 
and to hook them gently so that you don't break the shells all apart. So what I'm trying to do is just go in underneath very carefully and then out just enough for the barb to be exposed. Watch, just like that. Okay, so there's the crab hooked on there. And even when it's hooked like that, they tend to steal it. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm using the electric on anchor mode and I'm using a slip bobber. And the reason I'm using a slip bobber, you can see that I'm actually trying to cast underneath where the piles are. So it's very hard to do if you have a lead that's like seven to nine feet deep. That's how deep the water is here. Yes! Nice head shakes. You know, the one thing you gotta do when you hook the sheep's head is getting away from the piles. All those piles are full of barnacles, and even if you use braided line, it's so easy for them to get you around them and then just break you off. Look at it. Oh, he's trying to go back towards the pile. Look, you can see those stripes. Ah, come on. That pile, that's where he came from, actually. That pile that's right behind him. Get out here. Gonna get him into the boat and hopefully into the cooler. <sighs> yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, they need to be a foot long, and this one's definitely 12 inches. You can see he's hooked just in the side of the mouth with that little hook. Aren't they a pretty fish? I think they're gorgeous. Nice stripes. Was I imagining things, or is he? Oh yeah, he's 13. Okay, dinner fish. He's gonna keep the ice cubes handy. You're gonna crash. Oh, it's a nice black drum. Okay, I gotta get it away from the pile. Come on. Okay. Be nice to land this fish. <laughs> we were just casting, casting crabs to try to get maybe some black drum and to try to get some sheep's head and then just changed up. Oh, it's a grouper. You know what? That's a gag. That's a nice gag grouper. It's actually a keeper. Funny, the size of the fish that can hide under there. I thought it was a black drum. I don't have a net, so I don't know if he's gonna get off. That is a nice gag. How am I gonna get it underneath the gill, maybe? Be good, okay. It's gotta be 24 inches, I think it is. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? Wow, look, you can see that jig in his mouth? He nailed it. <laughs> what a surprise. Look at the beautiful highlights around the tail. That's amazing. In that shallow water, he's got a nice belly, too. Okay. Let's take a measurement on this fish. Uh, he is, I'm gonna put the tail there, and I'm gonna put the head here. Oh boy, he's over 24. That is a nice fish. Beauty, what a gorgeous fish. In shallow water too, just fishing on the flats. And look at, he's got that jig head just in the side of the mouth. I'll tell you what, I thought that we lost that fish because it went right back for that fish house that you see behind us there. See if we can pop that jig out, beautiful. Isn't he gorgeous? Wow, what a gorgeous fish. They're great eating too. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Time to move. This time I'm going to brave the wind and fish an old railway line that's full of abutments that should be holding lots of sheep's head. I'm hoping the tide will be low enough and slow enough that I'll be able to use the power poles to keep the boat stationary, enabling me to drift my crabs right to the piles. This is amazing. You know, we've just shifted from fishing some of the shallower piles. You can see this is a long railway bridge. You can see the anglers up there. Look at the way he's targeting a sheep that he probably sees it up there. So we're just fishing off of them because they can't walk out here. And I dropped it in and I've got one on already. Nice little sheep said he might be a keeper, but we're going to probably let him go. You can see that water is a little bit stirred up because of the wind. Come on, there we go. Ugh, right here. Look at this. 
They look like they've got those stripes from a convict, you know, like in the old uh, movies, the black and white stripe. Look at pretty fish. And those spines are very dangerous. You got to be very careful. Now look at these crabs work so well. You see that small hook that I'm using? It really helps to have one that's a light wire because their shell can crack easily. So what I do is I like to hook it just in behind where the legs are, go about halfway through, and then just pierce the point through like that. And what I've done is I've only got about, uh, I'm gonna say about eight inches. This is 40 pound fluorocarbon leader, a swivel. And then I have about a half ounce egg sinker that slides up and down. So I don't want to have that sinker too far up because I want my bait to stick really close to that pile. About five feet up, I have my float. And this is actually a stationary float. And watch what I'm going to do here. Before the tide starts stripping, I'm using a spinning outfit now because I need to toss it a little farther. So I'm trying to get that weight to sink down and keep my bait very close to this pile. Wow, it's a nice size sheep's head. Man, they are on the feed on this railway track. Look at all those barnacles that are on that pile. Oh, and there's a dolphin here. I hope he doesn't grab my fish. I just saw a big boil. What a, no oh, he's right there. Don't you grab him. Come on, this is my dinner. Yeah, this is a nice eating size. Definitely over. Look at, I can see the dolphin down there. Da, da, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You wouldn't believe the teeth these guys have. If I can hold him here, can you see those teeth in their mouth? They've got chompers almost like human teeth. That's why they're so hard to hook with that little lightweight hook. It really helps. So he's gonna be great eating. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna fry these guys or whether I'm gonna do them on the grill. Beautiful. And look at, see that nice bridge? Every one of these piles has all kinds of sheep's head feeding around them. Good, I didn't see that dolphin this time. Yeah. Right near the pile. That's awesome. Too bad that wind is just blowing stronger and stronger. Come on. Ugh. There. I think that's going to do it. I think I've got my fish for dinner. Time to haul the catch out of the boat and get ready to clean the fish for dinner. I'm leaving the Pro Sports boat at the dock, so I move the fish cleaning table closer to the sea breeze on the lift. I make sure my knife is sharp and get at it by starting to make my first cut just behind the head of the first sheep set and proceeding to point the blade outwards and carefully work my way back. Once I start to cut along the back and can fit my thumb in between the fillet and the vertebrae, I turn the blade towards the fish and start cutting down to the rib cage. I proceed until I reach the end of the rib cage and push the knife tip right through to the belly. From that point, I separate the fillet from the belly all the way to the tail. I go back near the head and work the knife separating the fillet from the rib cage completely. I flip the fish over and do the same thing on the other side. The knife is sharp and I always make sure I'm cutting away from my hands at the same time as I'm adding pressure to keep the fish from sliding around. It's so important not to rush and make a slip. Sheep said have tough bones and skin, so you gotta be careful. No need to cut hands or get pricked by a spine. I rinse off the fillets and make sure any loose scales and blood are rinsed away. Once they are clean, I carefully use the knife to remove the lateral line bones. I run the knife down both sides of the lateral line to create a strip, and I also run the knife under the bone strip so it's easy to remove it all together. I repeat the process on the other side of the fillet and always make sure all the bones are removed. I use a couple of fingernails to hold the skin pinned to the cleaning table and run the knife at an angle away from me to remove the skin from the fillet. It's so important to have the knife angle just right so that no meat is left on the skin, but at the same time that you don't cut through the skin. I do the same on the other fillet, and they're both rinsed in fresh water. I repeat the same cleaning process for the rest of the sheep set, and in no time, I have very fresh, boneless, and skinless fillets. 
My last step in the fish prep is to cut the fillets into small two by two inch fish chunks. That makes for easy frying. Today I'm using the barbecue only to support my small deep fryer, my fish platters, and my coating mix. The trees wave as the wind continues to blow. While the oil was heating up, the pro sports was washed and drying, the fish cleaning table cleaned and drying, the rods and reels have been rinsed off with fresh water and drying nicely. Now, back to the frying. First thing I do is take a small piece of fish, tiny piece, and see if the oil is up to 350 degrees. The oil is hot and it's time to coat each piece of fish and get frying. I only coat a couple of fish pieces at a time so that the coating stays dry for the next batches and I make sure I shake off any excess coating before adding them to the fryer. Adding only a few pieces of coated fish at a time, make sure the oil maintains its 350 degree temperature and that the fish will fry fast, retaining minimal oil. While I cook the fish, Mulligan makes sure any scraps are cleaned up. I use a lid to keep the heat in the fryer. While the fish are frying, I check the fish chunks with a fork to make sure none are stuck together. I like my fish fried golden brown. I scoop them out with a strainer, let the excess oil drip off before placing them on paper towels. I wait a minute for the oil to heat up again before I start adding my next batch of coated fish. I'm not going to mention any names, but someone is patiently waiting to sample the fish. I check the last batch and it's good to go. My highlight, it's time to enjoy a fresh fish dinner that includes deep fried sheep's head with friends. It sounds like mushroom, like a uh, fig. Yeah. 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 Figgy. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for all the fish that we caught. Plenty, Lord. We're going to eat so well tonight. And just thank you for providing more than we actually need. We are very blessed. One day I wandered out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics. Raymarine, simply superior. <laughs>